cut myself a slice of time when the wind blows, when the river meets the sea. Hello, I'm Andrew Price, and in this episode of the A to Z of Bushcraft, we'll be covering the subject of S for shelter. Now, the importance of shelter is not to be underestimated. It's vital to keep the elements at bay and to make us comfortable in our camp. The first thing I do when I'm looking for somewhere to pitch camp is to check up in the trees. Always look out for any dead branches that could fall and injure you in the night. Even a very small stick falling from a great height can cause a lot of injury. So by looking up, checking for any dead branches, anything without any leaves on it should be viewed as suspicious. And the trees above me now look pretty good. It's definitely worth bearing in mind beech trees and sometimes ash trees have a tendency to drop their limbs without warning. So try and avoid any obviously overhanging, very heavy looking branches. This is a shelter tarp or what some people call a basher. Now we want the ridged line to be as tight as possible. So the best way I've found to do that is to wrap it around a tree, pull the one way, then wrap it around the ridge line again and pull it once more. And then just to finish up, a few wraps around the ridge line and finish off with a quick release knot. These tarps, or bashes as the army call them, are made out of waterproof nylon material, so they're very light. They also have silicon proofing over all the, all the seams, so they shed water, and the whole thing is printed in DPM, which is disruptive pattern material. This enables you to stay completely invisible in woodland, which is very handy if you don't want to be found. And importantly, it's very robust. It's designed, it can be used as an emergency stretcher, so it's very tough. Also not too heavy, which makes it ideal, and it has all these perfectly situated loops and guying points so that we can adjust it in lots of different ways. Now the best way I've found to adjust the, the ridge line is to use what we call prussic knots. Now these were invented for climbers to use to ascend ropes if they fell into a crevasse or if they needed to climb a fixed line. A prussic knot uses a thinner piece of cord than the main rope. This is then wrapped around the main rope and it works like a fist, and the more pressure that's put on it, the tighter it grips. So we can use this to adjust the guy lines very tightly just by pulling it along and it'll hold firmly. That's great. The next thing I need to do is to guy out the corners. So just pull it through. Wrap around a couple of times and then just poke a loop through, tighten it up and that's good. And then to release it Let's give it a sharp pull there, and the whole thing comes undone. Well, a very good tip is to use the, the point, the angle of the corner, to direct which way the guy lines need to go. I prefer to keep my guy lines separate, which gives me a bit more flexibility. It's a good idea to exploit any natural features you can in order to guy out the tarpaulin effectively. You should only really need to cover the corners, but if you have the time, it's always worth putting a few extra in just to maintain as much tension as possible. And then we run this line, this corner line, out to a conveniently situated beech tree. Same thing again. A couple of wraps around the tree. A nice quick release knot. That's fine. No one's going to trip over that. If we can't find a tree in a suitable position, or any other natural object, making a peg is the next best thing. Always make sure you have your tarpaulin guide out as well as you possibly can. And this is our home for the night. It should allow any rain that falls on us to run off. The only thing I'd consider doing if the winds were high is to lower these just to afford me a little bit more of a windbreak but the conditions the way they are at the moment the rain seems to be coming straight down so just a roof like this should be absolutely perfect now normally i'd be looking for a nice flat piece of ground with no rocks no roots nothing that's going to keep me awake at night but today i've brought some useful equipment with me that will prevent 
me even having to worry about that. It's called a hammock. Most of you have seen one, but the latest types are absolutely ideal for bushcraft and survival use. I've left one side of my tarp open just so that you can see what I'm doing here. I always finish it off with just a simple bow knot. So you don't have to do anything fancy. Just a straightforward bow like you're doing up your shoelaces. And as long as it's wrapped around the tree a few times, that shouldn't cause you any problems. Pull the hammock out, take it to another tree, and pull it as tight as possible. If you have any sags in it, you'll have a pretty uncomfortable night. You also need to look along it just to make sure it's perfectly level. Otherwise, you'll slide either to one end or the other during the night. Wrap around the tree once more and finish off with a bow. I'm sure most of you have seen the, uh, the types of hammocks that you get in Mexico or Thailand that are made from a net material. Those are great. If you just want to sit out in your garden, have a few cold beers, perfect. But if you want to spend some time out in the woods and sleep soundly, something like this is far better. It's made from double layer nylon, which means that insects can't bite through it. If you're using a hammock in cold weather, you definitely need to use an insulation mat, something like a thermarest or a carry mat in between the two layers of nylon, and this will insulate you against the cold air. Otherwise, your sleeping bag gets compressed and you'll have a pretty cold night, just as comfortable as your own bed at home. Oh, that's really not too bad. Myself a slice of time when the wind 